This video will show cast modification of a superchondral transradial socket. The cast modification demonstrated is specifically for use with custom rolled silicone socket construction. Modification variations for use with thermoplastic sockets will also be highlighted. Here we see the plaster cast that was taken in the manner demonstrated in another video. First mark the location of the epicondyles and proximal border of the electronon. The medial and lateral wall height should be one and one quarter inch proximal to the epicondyles. The posterior wall height will be approximately one and one half inch proximal to the electronon. Posterior wall height may be greater for very short residual limbs and lower for longer residual limbs. Trace out the desired trim lines as shown. It is sometimes useful to take a circumference measurement at the antecubital fold during casting. If that was done, this measurement can be checked on the positive model and the cast modified to match the anatomical, anatomical measurement. The anterior wall should fit directly into the antecubital fold. The medial and lateral walls of the brim should cup in around the limb about three-eighths of an inch as shown. Begin to shape the anterior wall to be a U-shape as shown. Avoid leaving square edges that could lead to stress points for the silicone socket where it may tear. Measure the proximal ML that is, the narrowest point of the brim proximal to the epicondyles. The finished measurement should be one quarter inch smaller than the measured ML width at the epicondyles on the residual limb. Shape the brim with a round shore form file as shown. Round the medial and lateral walls into the posterior wall. The deepest point of the brim modification is very near the proximal edge. Be careful not to take plaster off over the epicondyles. The posterior wall is modified to be about one and one half inch proximal to the electronon. Smooth the cast with a half round file, removing any high spots. Slightly more plaster is removed just proximal to the end of the radius and just distal to the electron to create a firm contact with the residual limb in these areas. These areas are loading areas for lifting and create a force couple. Generally, no plaster additions are required along the uh, aspect of the socket. In cases where there was roping of the plaster during casting, any of these very low points will be filled in with loose plaster later.
work your way completely around the model so that every area has been roughed up slightly with the shoreform file. This will later be smoothed with screen. A round file is used to continue shaping the anterior wall. Again, a gentle U-shape is desired. Recheck the PML and continue to bring this dimension to the desired value, that is, one quarter inch narrower than the measured ML at the epicondyles. If this socket is not going to be fabricated using rolled silicone, Plaster needs to be added on the anterior surface as shown. Silicone sockets do not need this modification due to the elasticity of the material. If this buildup is needed, the apex should be one half inch distal to the antecubital fold and one quarter inch thick at this point. Again, care should be taken to remove slightly more plaster to avoid any lost motion, anterior distal and posterior proximal. Smooth the plaster with Fabricut or screen. Fill any imperfections and finish the flare of the brim with plaster. No buildups over bony prominences are needed when using rolled silicone. Reliefs are made as needed by creating space between the silicone socket and rigid frame. For a rolled silicone socket, an anterior mounting anchor is located distal to the anticipated trim line of the rigid frame as shown. One or two mounting anchors locations are marked just distal to the olecranon, being careful to avoid where electrodes may be positioned. For thermoplastic sockets, in addition to the buildup distal to the antecubital fold, a buildup is required on the proximal aspect of the olecranon as well, in order to accommodate the progressive prominence of the olecranon as the elbow flexes. The location of the buildup is shown here. If a thermoplastic socket will use a northwestern socket as described by Billock, the anterior wall trim line will be modified as illustrated with the red line. Rolled silicone accommodates expansion of the tissue distal to the antecubital fold and electron prominence by dynamic expansion due to the elasticity of the material as shown.